Ray accidentally saves an old lady as a token of appreciation. The old lady gave him a mysterious sapphire. But the next moment, with a flash of intense blue light, the old woman suddenly disappeared in front of Roy's face. But before he could react, the jewel in his hand glowed blue again, and then he too disappeared. When Roy opened his eyes again, he was in a 21st century city. But at that moment, Roy didn't know. He had already crossed over. He looked up for a moment. He saw what the old lady said was a steel dragon that could fly in the sky. But just then, a strange girl crashed into Roy's arms and poured a whole cup of coffee on him. Looking at the beautiful girl in front of him, Roy was at a loss for words, and Lisa couldn't help but look twice at the strangely dressed Roy. But at this moment Roy didn't know. The girl in front of him was the one he had come to see. But fate is a wonderful thing. Just as Lisa was driving home, as the snowstorm blocked her view, Lisa accidentally bumped into a man. She got out of her car to check, only to find that it was the same Roy she'd just met. But Roy got up as if nothing had happened. The police then took him to hospital for a checkup. Roy was in good health and was fine. He just kept on saying, he was a knight from the Middle Ages. The police didn't take Roy's words seriously. They thought it was the aftermath of a car accident. But the way he greeted Lisa was a bit of a surprise. Since the police had no information about Roy, Lisa decided to, to take him back to her home for recuperation. On the way, Roy was surprised by the music coming from the car. He even pushed all the buttons in the car. When they got home, Roy became interested again in the, all the appliances in the house, and asked Lisa to help him prepare a big pot for boiling water and a bathtub. Hearing Roy's words, Lisa was instantly dumbfounded. She rushed him to the bathroom, but after after the shower, Roy stepped out with impunity. Faced with that gorgeous body, Lisa felt her heart pounding, even as she left. She couldn't help but look back twice. But just as she was making her phone call, she suddenly saw the courtyard ablaze. It was Roy who had lit a bonfire. He was about to catch a skunk for food. Luckily, Lisa was there to stop him. Then she found out from Roy. It turned out that he was hungry. Soon they were in the restaurant. Lisa even ordered him a burger and fries he'd never had before. But just then, Lisa's ex-boyfriend walked into the restaurant. Roy is brought home by the kind-hearted Lisa, but when faced with all the smart technology of modern times, Roy is overwhelmed. Even a smart stereo, he can talk to it for half a day, let alone catch up on a show. Even Lisa was no match for him. Looking at Lisa sleeping beside him, Roy thoughtfully covered her with a blanket. But soon, Roy also drifted off to sleep. In his dream, Roy meets the mysterious old woman again, but she told him he had to complete his mission by Christmas Eve, otherwise he would be stranded in that world forever. Roy immediately asks the woman, what was his mission? But the old woman said it was right next to him. Then a white light flashed. Roy woke up from his dream. As Christmas Day drew nearer and nearer, Roy started to help Lisa set up the venue. But when confronted with the Christmas tree props Lisa brought out, Roy said his workmanship was too crude. He insisted on dragging Lisa out into the woods and picked out a real tree with a single swing of the axe. The big thick tree was cut down with a single blow. But when he got home, Roy asked Lisa to lend him her car in order to get the keys without any problems. Roy said he had tamed many mounts before, and so it was. Roy took the car for a crooked ride, but by the end of the night, Lisa was inundated with fines, with Christmas just around the corner. Roy looked a little worried at the moment because he still didn't know what his mission was going to be. Luckily, with Lisa's reassurance and encouragement, Roy was soon in the right frame of mind. But the next morning, the next door neighbor asked Roy an invitation to Christmas, but Roy turned it down on the spot because he was busy. Because he could tell from Lisa's expression, there must be some conflict between the two. Then they went to the supermarket together to buy the ingredients for Christmas Eve and said that the bread of this century was very bad. So Roy decided to make a meal for her with his own hands. 14th century bread for her to taste. In the process of making it, Roy also added a bean to the flour as is traditional in their area, adding a bean to the flour. It is said that whoever eats it will get their Christmas wish, and with that Roy stood behind Lisa. He taught her how to knead the flour. The atmosphere was warm and intimate. They could feel each other's breath. But just then, a phone call interrupted the moment. When Lisa heard the voice on the other end of the line, Lisa's expression instantly froze. They're spending a lot of time with each other. They had both grown to love each other by now. But Roy knew in his heart. He and Lisa were not from the same world after all. It was almost Christmas Eve. But Roy still didn't know what his mission was. So he simply accepted the moment and stopped thinking about it. In a flash, it was Christmas Eve. They both changed into their dresses. Lisa even tied Roy's tie herself. Just as their eyes met, their love for each other grew stronger and stronger. Roy seemed to understand the meaning of his grandmother's words at that moment. At the dinner, Roy changed into a knight's outfit to take pictures with the children. But then the female neighbor made a second attempt to impress Roy, and brought out a gift, for there is a local legend. It is said that the man and woman who kiss under the gift will be sheltered by Father Christmas for the rest of their lives. So after the dinner was over, Roy took the gift. He couldn't wait to find Lisa. They kissed each other without a care in the world. But just then, the sapphire on Roy's chest suddenly glowed blue. This meant that his mission was complete. It also meant that it was time for him to leave. The two then went to the place where Roy had first appeared. The parting was imminent, despite the fact that both of them, they were both sad to see each other go. Lisa saw Roy off with a smile on her face. No matter what, no matter where I am, 
I hereby pledge my service to thee. With a flash of white smoke, Roy disappeared from Lisa's world forever. It was as if he had never existed. At that moment Lisa finally understood that Roy had never cheated on her. He had never lied to her. She returned to her home, lost, eating Roy's bread alone. But just then, Lisa accidentally took the lucky bean out of the bread and ate the lucky bean. Even though she knew it would never come back, she made a wish in her heart. And on the other side, it was as if Roy had been summoned. He went to the forest again and found the mysterious old woman and begged her to send him back to Lisa. He was willing to pay any price for that. With a wave of the old woman's hand, and Roy disappeared into thin air. It was on Christmas Day. As the crowd asked Lisa where Roy had gone, a familiar voice sounded again behind them. This time, Roy was like Prince Charming, appeared in front of Lisa. At this moment, he finally understood the old woman's mission with Lisa. The two of them kissed each other, and finally, as the crowd looked on with envy, Roy got on his horse and took Lisa away.